Well, hello, this is Timurias from Total Energy Channel, and we are here in StarMaid once again on Mushroom Fleet server with Misfit Technologies for a ship lineup or showcase. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Misfits. <laughs> Indeed. And we can see some rather spectacular ships in the background. And I will go into a better view if I haven't built myself in. All right, so we are starting from the smallest to the biggest and uh, the first one is the only one I know the name of and this is the Lucky, am I not right? Yes, you're right. <laughs> and well, um, do you have any story or information to tell about the ships, its uh, systems and so on? Uh, well, it's just basically a, just a small combat fighter uh, intended for close close combat. Uh, it's got uh, a cannon, uh, a rapid fire cannon, and then it also has uh, two homing missiles, sniper missiles. Mm. All right, and we have some rather uh, minimal interior here, and it's a straight out fighting combat vessel. Yeah, we didn't do much on the deck over there. <laughs> it's a simple one. Yeah, but it's a good use of slabs to <coughs> make it compact. <laughs> yeah, we kept it. Uh, we kept it so small that it could go through any shuttle gate, basically. Mm. Well, that's a nice design. Very compact, and there is actually a challenge. Uh, when will the challenge uh, be uh, ending? Uh, it'll be over this Friday, and I'll be starting another one, uh, possibly using a bigger ship. All right. Um, well, anyways, it's a very nice fighter, and I suggest we maybe should uh, move over to the next vessel, if you don't have any, anything to add. Cool, yeah, the next one is called Enlil. It's, uh, um, as you must have noticed, the first one being called Loki, the second one Enlil. We have a theme of uh, gods' names for our ships. Yeah. And uh, one of our rules is that it can be any god of any religion. We're not biased as long as it's a Wikipedia-based god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, so uh, in this case, it's Enlil, one of the Sumerian, uh, Sumerian head gods. Um, yeah, as you can see on the front, it's got a laser beam uh, on the bottom and then a big cannon on the top. Mm. This baby packs quite a punch. Uh, or at least for a small ship, we try to put as much in there as possible. So it's got a full-on uh, gunning array for both shields and piercing, and the same goes for missiles. So it's a little tight one. Uh, it's got some finished interior, if you want to have a look at this one. Out of the few ships that we have, I think this one has fin nice finished interior. So if you want to have a look. I will. Um, let's see here if I can... Or we can do that later, maybe. I can just have a fast look of the interior. Uh, we can yeah, look it's it. not. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the doors on the side here. All right. It's very. Oh, there it is. It's very neatly hidden here. Yes, I follow you exactly. in. Exactly. So you, so you're in a in a little uh, hallway now. Yeah. Um, you got two doors, and then upstairs there's the cockpit room. One down, one uh, the first door or to the left is a little. Uh, oh, you're going to the cockpit, basically. Yeah, and here we have a little sleeping quarters and, well, basically some compact interiors for. Exactly mm -hmm. behind the behind the engineering room, which is the room with the computers. There's a little captain's quarters also. All right. Of course, and of course the captain eats mushrooms. <laughs> to keep, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, to keep his senses in check. <laughs> exactly. yeah. uh, then there's a little hallway leading to the module connected to the back of the ship. Yep. And uh, of course a hallway leading up towards the cockpit. But uh, I think those two quarters were nice to show. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw them. Um, it's a nice like angle, the design of the ship. It looks very high tech, but still uh, almost modular. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
that's that's the kind of line that we're we're putting in there, as if every ship has a rather straight chassis mm. uh, to which all the functional modules are sort of connected. Uh, that's the general idea of our ships. So you'll see that in most of the things. Well, that's a very cool uh, design. And uh, well, as I said before, but not on recording, I do like the turrets very much with them being so compact and the good use of slabs, which you can see here. Yeah, again, we made a basic design, sort of slabbed it all over the ships, but then uh, if you take a closer look, you'll see small details being changed on all the mounts and all the barrels yeah. uh, for, each different, uh, for each different ship. Yep, well... Oh, yeah, you want to move to the next? Yes, absolutely. And here we have a quite big ship. And if you it's want to mention big, classes, do that, because everybody has, to, has their own class system, so... <laughs> yeah, Yeah, we're... I mean, we're still take these, to take these baby into a, into a battle with other, other crews, mm. so... You know, we, we haven't had much other ships to measure them to. But uh, in our minds... He's the only one that's seen battle, it's, it's one and oh. Mm. Uh, and then I think the next ship, the Enlil here, will be the next one I'll do for the next weekend challenge. Yeah. And then I think uh, Enki, uh, we c you can see it as a like a Corvette or a destroyer type ship. You know, if we're like talking like Eve standards, for instance, I'd, I'd say this is a destroyer. Yep. And the Enki, it's the both ba basically both Enki and uh, Enlil can mm. can go for. Uh, you know, a frigate. Both of them are frigates. Let's just say that. Mm. They're not fighters, but frigates. Um, but for this yeah, ship... Yeah, and the Enki is actually a similar functioning ship as the Enlil. Uh, Enki is a bit bit, bit more built for damage. Um, it has a, quite a long-range uh, weapon system. Uh, I, don't, I haven't been in that ship for, uh, for a little while. I, I think it also believes yeah, it also has scatter missiles on it, so uh, it's able to take out uh, heat seekers. Mm. Uh, heat seekers, yeah, quite a large, large batch of heat seekers, big guns on it. Well, there is two things I find especially cool with this ship, and it's the uh, good emblem implementation of the tubes that go neatly into different structures. And then we yeah, have that's the DK's work. <laughs> well, it's good work. And then we have yeah, this stuff. logo that's inverted, and inverted logos are always cool. They take a bit more thinking to <laughs> mm -hmm. get right. Yeah. Indeed. Um, and uh, also the hallway leading leading towards the inside. Yeah, the, in the interior on this one's actually pretty nice. Yeah, you can have a look at that. Oh, and I enter at the back here. Yes. Yeah, it's a poop hole. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. We're getting here. Oh, and there we have... It's a nice looking hallway. Quite crammed, but still uh, done much with the space that is available. And then we have to the bridge here. And that's always nice to have a real bridge with windows to the outside. And here we have weapon systems hovering in the air, some logics. And well... This ship is made to have essentially a big gun attached to the bottom of it, uh, a bigger turret in a sense, and it can be wirely uh, activated with the wireless logic. Ah, okay, then why... that's... It'll essentially turn into a drone. Alright. So that's the big exposed parts of thrusters and energy and a little rail docker here, so you can strap on. Exactly. Yeah, they used to be a really big, uh, a really big long-range blunt missile. So a thing <laughs> that would just fire one direction, but really far. <laughs> oh wow, that's a heavy torpedo, basically. Yeah, yeah, and then it was like... Uh, I think it was like 10 barrels, or like a 10 barrel torpedo mesh that it would just fire off in one direction. Basically meant for uh, 
attacking steel targets. So if this ship would be taken to one of these sites, you could fly in and, and set the thing off and then undock it, fly off, and then have that thing just keep on perpetually launching torpedoes at, mm. the, at your enemy base. And then there's also to show off this camera, like the top use of slabs and you can see glowing blocks and systems blocks through and that looks very fancy. Um, and this is the long range centered ship, I think you said, with cannons. Yeah, yeah, the, it, it has a really long range, I think a 4K sniper rifle, so. Mm. Is there anything more you'd like to add to the Anki? It's my favorite. <laughs> it's the. It's his baby. <laughs> it's really cool. It's my person, my personal boat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's nice. And the next one, I think, is Inter's job to discuss. The Moradin. It's basically uh, a big miner. Yep. It's a fancy looking miner. Lots of turrets to defend itself. Uh, thanks to uh, the camera who put it on there. And the design as well isn't by me, but by my uh, faction members. But I designed the logic in there that is a uh, continuous miner with a solid mining array. Mm. And oh, yes, um, for the recording also, um, you have this system where you, all three of you, um, build the ships together. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, usually it uh, it starts off with an idea for a certain you know certain function of your ship. So let's say we're building a miner or a frigate. Mm. Um, usually uh, we'll set up some modules with the help of Inter's calculation. Him being the engineer and all, he's basically got a good calculator and some nice spreadsheets, so he can calculate uh, what kind of uh, systems we're using. Mm. Um, then usually I'll build the, ho the hull, that's me, boycott. Um, I'll usually build it in all blue to, to spend not too much time in detailing, but just getting a general shape down. Mm. And then um, usually a DK will take over at some point as I move to the next project. <clears throat> and uh, he, will, he will put all the details in, so most of the slabbing and the uh, the, the lines, I'll set a basic outline of where I think a diagonal should be or where a light should be and then he'll just take it on and then uh, and make it into cool looking stuff. Mm. Yeah, essentially we kind of just put it on an assembly line in a sense and in that way, kind of if you look at all these ships as a whole, you can tell they were all came off the same assembly line in a sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, you see that are clearly a family of ships. Yeah. Mm. And the beauty is, uh, I have a I have a problem like a general perpetual life problem with finishing things. And uh, DK, as he stated earlier, said uh, he had a, he had a problem with starting the ships off and just getting the basic thing going. And then uh, Inter said, uh, "I'm bad at designing, but I can do some logic for you." So that sort of clustered us together into a group. Uh, yeah, just uh, communally building ships like this. Yeah, that's how <laughs> society is supposed to work. But <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, really we, what uh, we base our all, all statues of, yeah. to be honest as well. It's sort of sharing of knowledge. Yeah, we met on the Mushroom Fleet server last season, uh, and I kind of was second-hand running as another faction at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was somebody else's faction, So, but when that when they shut that server down unfortunately uh, we kind of stuck together and moved to a different server and then once we heard the mushroom fleet server was coming back up we were we were ecstatic so yeah. we got with the admins and they let us in here and gave us creative to be able to you know build these things so that way we can you know play a big part in the server coming up when the season starts yeah that's really nice and uh, if anyone missed that out uh the misfits are kind enough to let me host my embassy on their home base. So that you will see. Yeah. The general Glad idea. To have you. I mean it's a general idea of our of our group, man. Like it's the way we met to, uh, as well. Like I came online the first night I was playing StarMade. I I looked up which server was friendly to noobs. Mm. So I go on on uh, I go on Mushroom Fleet and basically 
DK is one of the first to go, hey man, yeah, you can come and live here. And then he was all having all kinds of plans for me to do. I was like, I don't know this game, please give me a safe spot where I can just start building. And and uh, a couple of days later, we pick up some other dude and it turns out to be Inter and it turns out to be Dutch as well. And mm. yeah, it's a nice, nice little nerdy clusterfuck of friends. <laughs> That's what we are. That's fantastic. Yeah, well, some some, per, uh, some servers can be pretty pretty bad for new beginners. <laughs> yeah, Mushroom Fleet, Mushroom Fleet is fl friendly yeah, at yeah, least. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you're left at your own devices, but at the beginning, you can always count on somebody to pick you up and help you out. I started playing a little on Mushroom Fleet um, until I moved to the recording server of Star Squadron. So it's a, I know it's a good server. I mean, the basic use of that, their own currency, it it just makes for a lot of player-to-player -player interaction. Mm. And as a noob, essentially, that's what you want. You want to know that you're not alone in this unit. bloody big if you're by yourself. Yes. To be honest, it's the reason why I came out of single-player mode, because I was like, I need to meet other entities, because otherwise I'm going nuts. I was just sitting there in some shop, talking to a shopkeeper, and he was saying nothing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It gets lonely in the storm. It's yeah, it gets lonely. It, it's in insane. Player. Yeah, this being a player-driven economy, it definitely pushes a whole community part of the, you know, whole mm. server. Hey, we gotta check the next ship. It's in yep. pride and glory. Yep. Ah. This is the Mefekna. Yes. Well, it's my Fekna, but it's just called Fekna. Okay, right. And it looks, <clears throat> if you look at the front, uh, I hope it's not offensive, but it's it, it's kind of a froggish uh, face look. I'm not in front of it, and I don't hope to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you might be looking at the damage dealing end, but that's the last thing you see. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, so you're like, hey, happy fair. Happy fair. <laughs> okay, I'm back at spawn. <laughs> got what? lots of missiles on there, uh, laser cutting beams. Uh, it got even mining beams as well to uh, collect mm -hmm. your garbage when you're destroyed. Yeah, that's that's very good to have to have a little salvage system. Oh yeah, this thing, thing sucks you up while you're being destroyed. Think of that. Well, that's a really useful ship if I ride out this, take someone out. I want their stuff. I don't know. I don't want to go out and like build the mood collector stuff by while getting shot at. <laughs> well, this this uh, ship too, Anterina, this is meant for really long range too. Mm -hmm. This is not really meant to be in an up close battle either. It's supposed no. to be a support, like a support vessel to help the main guy fight. You know what I mean? But he sets back and just starts waylaying him with missiles. Lots of homing missiles on there, but it has uh, a nice uh, long-range cannon as well on there that's rapid firing mm -hmm. and uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's quite a punch and it's full with weapon systems and uh, power. And I still need some more. I got only 10 million at the moment. Well, can always add some more power. <laughs> that's quite much though. Yeah, and the single missile will use it all. Yeah? Oh, it's a 10 million missile. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's quite much. But that's one of his main weapons, and uh, lots of support missiles as well, and uh, some nice decoy missiles and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's basically a large missile barrage with some nice uh, add-ons on it. So it's a... Uh... A big missile support supporter. Yeah. And this one actually has some rather fancy interior with a good use of uh, ingots to make. Oh it yeah, look. yours look like metal on the inside. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real steely. Yeah. Also on this ship, uh, DKM did a lot of finishing touches on the ship, but I did most of the design also myself, so I'm proud of that. Yeah. Well, it looks really oh, cool. Yes. Some like heat sinking stuff over the uh, main missiles, missile beam, missile. 
yeah that's local missile and here we have the salvage system continuous fire and I see some explosive effects is the explosive yeah, effect? color effects yeah and some color effects and stuff so you get a nice fireworks from this uh, ship oh yeah I don't think they're uh big hitting missiles so I don't I mean if you, could, if you fire them I don't think it's gonna hurt anything well they set the fireworks at the moment but maybe we can do that on the end of the show just to be uh, sure it doesn't kill anything gotcha <laughs> during the show yeah we'll just go like fire all these missiles then you'll do the subtitles and then hopefully you won't die during the credits yeah that could be an exciting uh, showcase video end <laughs> but we we'll still have a uh, some ships left. Yeah, one, yep. one more is lined up here, and this is the biggest one, naturally. That's yeah, this was our. Yep, yeah, this was our first ship. This is the Mazu. Mazu. It's a Chinese god for journey. All right. Doesn't look like this a thing journey is essentially ship. can handle any one-on-one -on -one battle scenario with any ship its size or maybe even larger. Mm. Uh, it's got a stop cannon, an ion cannon, and then a heavy cannon, as long as uh, two ion missiles. Uh, that's a rapid dumb fire, and then it also has a homing heavy, uh, a heavy hitting homing missile. All right, and a little bay for a little ship also, so you can go down to station and such. Yeah, in a sense, you can pretty much just. Uh, explore space in this and you have the little shuttle there to carry it to the planets and other stations well something that's really cool with this ship is that the front of the ship looks very unusual from a general ship design with a base yeah, each one of those is a barrel a cannon barrel yeah but well, having this uh, very, um, very not streamlined and uh, complex front to really emphasize the lack of uh, um, air, like friction stuff. What's it called in English? I don't remember. But uh, oh, you mean that it doesn't have a pointy nose? This yeah. is just a stump. Yeah, it's, yeah, just it's like. Mm. We not designed it as a fighter, basically, the ship. The ship is just meant to leave a dent wherever it goes. So the stump end was the, was the good way to go with it. Yeah? Yeah, it's got two million in shields. So, I mean, and it's got a heck of a regain on it as well. So, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a hard ship to take down. Yeah, but it looks cool with this uh, complex front because it's, uh, it's unusual and that makes it exactly. unique. Uh, uh, speaking of unique and uh, the class in question that you asked earlier, we have had some thoughts about it. We uh, we have decide, decided to make a, to make a, a certain selection of our ships unique. Uh, so when they are getting to a bigger size, we'll make that the only copy that flies around of that particular ship. And for the rest, we intend to use a, a similar to the naval classing system that goes around worldwide in which if we do decide to make a copy of the ship, the, the, the ship then becomes a class. In other words, if there would be a second Mazu, it would then technically be a Mazu class ship ah. of a certain specific function. You understand? Okay. So in, in naval, naval naming, the class is, is sort of the how, first how ship. the first ship was called. Yeah. yeah, the first ship will be the class and then from that point on, each ship will have its specific function, but it will, based along the, will yeah, be based like along the chassis of the first ship. Yamato class, very big battleship. Exactly. So there was there was one one ship that was named that first, and that's mm. why these they're, they're called these names. Exactly. So this is basically uh, these ships. You have others going on, but these ships are the name givers of future equal sized vessels. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's why we call them, uh, have them these rather short godlike names, because uh, they can function as uh, as just uh, class names later. Yeah. yeah so so that 
if let, let, let's say that a player deserves a big hole for himself he has done something that we're like okay no guy you need your own little boat let's give him a hole so from that point he'll probably name his ship his own his own name but it will still be the class of the original ship like so if i would uh, perform a glorious act then i would have the Jimurism Mazu class ship. No, not the Mazu. We've decided to keep that one unique. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but you I used it, it as, as an example, example earlier just because <laughs> yeah. it was the last one we were talking about. But we decided right. basically everything under the Enki will keep, uh, will keep uh, like, Enki will be unique the rest month. Yep. Everything up from Enki will be unique. Okay. Now I get confused, but. Uh... I'm sure it like, will get out in a good way. No, like what I'm saying with Unique is like it won't be likely that we'll copy these holes unless that there's a specific task given for a new type of that hole, you know? Yeah, 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 naturally. Um, but the naming of the holes is based of the first. Yeah, yeah, they're based on the first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're just a new faction coming out. I mean, we essentially, like I said, when we met, we brought this together, and I put this together, and uh, this is our first line of ships that we're putting yeah. out, and, you know, for people to see, and you know, kind of putting ourselves out there as far as letting people see what we're doing. Yes, well, I'm glad that I can show them off um, for the world first time, then, because this is some spectacular builds. Thank you. Well, you have time done for a fireworks. Great job. <laughs> yes, time for fireworks. And here we have some good fireworks. There we go, red, white and blue. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the colors of all our flags. <laughs> oh, is that so? Fancy. Well, isn't it yours either? Oh, there's red, white, and blue too. Nope, mine is uh, yellow and uh, blue. Sweden. Oh yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yellow, yellow and blue. The missiles, uh, the stop missiles, fireworks took out my little vessel, but I'm now looking at the fireworks in astronaut mode. <laughs> you will uh. die as well, I think. And they are in in uh, fireworks mode as well. They don't have any damage things attached. But they're still doing damage. Uh, they will probably don't have 100% stop effect. Well, you have a color link to them. Uh, only one should suffice, I thought. Well, that's on Wiki. Oh, is that so? Hmm, I thought you would uh, need to have 100, but I don't know. But they don't, don't do the damage, just the normal linking mode. But then you have, like, <laughs> a few K damage. Yep, <laughs> a few K damage is enough for a like eight in block ship. <laughs> and that's why we did the fireworks at the end. <laughs> exactly. Well, I will thank you very much for uh, showing me all of these ships, and uh, we will sure have some future showcases with your ongoing projects when they are done too. So, thank you very much for that. You're welcome, man. You're welcome, thank you for the video. You're welcome, thank you. Well, then I will also say to all viewers that thank you very much for watching and I hope I will catch you in future videos. Jimadism Total Nerdry channel officially out.